Oh, Speed, don't you think it's a little mean to make a VOD analysis of a game you played against, like, fairly low MMR players or people down your bracket? No! You need to learn from your mistakes, all right? It's really not okay. You know what's not okay? It's really not okay that these players can't beat me. I mean, you have Game Leap at your access. You can literally buy a Game Leap subscription, and you should be immortal within at least a month. If it's taking you longer than that, I don't know, actually. I don't know what's wrong with you if it's taking you longer than that. But yeah, today, I'm gonna be showing you a Mars mid-game play I played with a bunch of our Game Leap friends. And the reason why I wanna say this as well is in the Game Leap Discord, if you like to play matches with people on Dota who are trying to have a good time, go to the Game Leap Discord and do that. But getting back on topic for this video, mid Mars, I dumpstered the enemy team. And what I wanna say conceptually about this video is how to build a net worth lead and keep it. A lot of people, they struggle to actually build net worth leads when they win their lane. They kinda just go slightly even or 200, 300 gold. I'm gonna be showing you how to build a thousand, 2000 gold advantages above the enemy mid laner and let's get into it. Something I've recently been doing has been experimenting with random heroes in the mid lane. I've played Beastmaster mid, Axe mid, Ricky mid, Sven mid, and recently, going back to the point of the Sven, I just played Sven mid lane and did a Vaughn analysis for the main Game Leap website. It was a really cool game because I managed to win my lane by applying core fundamentals I learned from other heroes onto Sven in the mid lane. In fact, I thought we were going to lose that game. We were 10k behind at some point, but because of good item timings and decision making, I was able to win it. So please click the link down below so you can check out that video. I put a lot of effort into it. It was a ton of fun to record and also to play. So yeah, click the link down below and I hope I see you guys there. All right, let's hop right into the game. But before we do, and I know that's kind of contradictory, but I have this idea that I want to bring to you guys and tell me if this resonates with any of you. It's like almost an experiment I've been doing lately, but whenever I watch a pro or analyze a pro match and then I play that hero afterwards, I do so well. Like I do so, so well for whatever reason. Like, and I know it might sound simple. Well, it's like, oh, because you're just copying what they're doing speed. But no, even if I'm doing something completely different, there's something about like analyzing high tier matches or paying attention to someone better than you and really analyzing what they're doing and then playing your own game and having success. So uh, let me know if that resonates with you, whether or not it does. I'm just curious and let me know in the comment section down below. But getting into the laning stage, I want to mention how I managed to pressure the first two creeps of the wave because this is a often very common dilemma for a lot of mid players, right? They get into the situation where they're like, eh, you know, I can't get both, right? So I'll just get one. I'll typically get the last hit. That's what they do. But if you have a nuke, what you do, right, when you have a nuke, is you walk up, you hit the creep that you want to deny, then you secure the creep with your nuke, bam, get the deny. That's really effective though, right? So you get the deny, right, you hit the deny once, then you nuke the creep that you want to last hit, and you secure the deny. It's really, really effective, works basically every single time whenever the creep meets neutral, and yeah, that's all I want to say for that. Moving on into this landing stage, I'm a really big fan of taking the passive at level 2. I know there's a lot of people who take spear at level 2, and while it is good for securing certain creeps, I just feel like having the 40% damage reduction block is insane. Like, 40%? Uh, that number just seems unbelievably high, and I didn't even use this spell too effectively because you can toggle it on and off so that you never have to turn around. I mean, think about how that effective that is in the laning stage. I can go for this deny, and while most heroes will get punished because they have to turn around and waste all that time, which causes them to get right-click two or three times, you don't have to do that as Mars at all. I just feel like this is so powerful. Now, I didn't do it, and this is why you have to analyze your own games, guys. I realized after playing this, I'm like, why didn't I do this? And that's why it's so crucial, but think about it. I really think that Mars mid is so powerful for this reason. You literally take 40% less damage for every single auto attack. That's insane. You also have two nukes to secure creeps, which is a really standard thing you want as a mid laner. And you can see the pressure I'm applying to this Wind Ranger here. Auto attack after auto attack. I have 69 damage. Pog. And... And really, I, I just felt so confident in this laning stage with my last hitting. I mean, guys, if you have tried last hitting with Mars, you know how good it feels. This hero has such a great animation, great damage, and then, of course, you can buy a Calling Blade. Moving on into the laning stage, what I'm going to recommend you guys do is try out this build that I go this game. So essentially what it is, it's like a very heavy stats build, and the goal of it is to be a wall. 
You're trying to just stay in the mid lane. You're not focused on rotations. You're focused on amping your farm and creating that net worth lead I'm talking about. And I'm going to show you exactly how to do that here. So first off, I'm going to start with a bracer. I buy a mango to keep my mana regen up, which I only eat preemptively because I didn't have a slot for it. And then getting into that, I'm going to go a Bassy into a Buckler. And both of these items go into the Vlads that you want so desperately on Mars because your W gets lifesteal for every single thing it hits. It's really, really effective. On top of it, this gives me unbelievably good stats for the early laning stage, right? As you can see, I'm very tanky. I have six armor and obviously I'm going to have even more stats when I get the Buckler. And I don't really feel the need to get boots. That might sound insane, and I'm not 100% sold on this idea either myself, but I just love this concept of being a standard mid laner who does not focus on rotating. If you're a mid lane player, I stress, I please, I beg you, I beg you that you try this out where you don't rotate, you don't focus on even pressuring your opponent that much. I'm harassing the Wind Ranger just because she's walking into my W's and Q's. I mean, obviously I'm trying to hit her while I'm securing the creeps because that's just a good mid laning concept. But overall, I'm focused on securing every single creep and deny that I can. I have 32 last hits, well now 33 at the five minute mark. And it's so easy to do as Mars. Like I'm being real, it's really easy. And because of my built up harass that I applied onto the Wind Ranger, my mango sustain that allowed me to get my spear off and my ultimate off, I'm able to pick up the kill, right? I literally just had enough mana. Ask yourself, why is that possible, guys? It's because I bought items that allowed me to do that. I bought the sets, I bought the mango, and I especially had the HP to do that because of the Sal's and Tangos I've been buying all throughout the laning stage. So keep that in mind. Did you lose a kill because you ran out of mana? Don't say it's unlucky. It's not unlucky. You're doing something wrong. <laughs> and finally, to stress this even more, I buy a, <laughs> I buy a soul ring and another mango. <laughs> I'm literally, I'm psycho, guys, but... As joking as this might sound, I'm very confident that this is the way to build an advantage in the mid lane. Now this Wind Ranger is quite a large amount of MMR below me, but I'm not doing anything insane here. I'm really good at last hitting, and I'm saying that partially out of ego, but mostly just to express to you guys that this is the most important thing to do in the laning stage. I'm able to beat this guy in net worth because I have 42. She is 23. Now it's easier for me to last hit because of the, you know, the damage difference, but it's also because of the items I get. And then because I get good last hits, I get more items. And because I get more items, I have more damage and more sustain. And I get even more last hits. It's a snowball. So you need to focus on the fundamentals so that you can apply the other concepts. You can't even apply the concepts that I'm talking about if you're bad at last hitting. <laughs> And now with an arcane ring that I found and all of my sustain, I'm able to start jungling. You're going to notice that I'm even casting my spear with the arcane rune. I would do the same thing if I got a regen rune to amplify my farm. And this is pretty common in the mid lane, especially as a Mars, that you're going to be wanting to pick up runes. I got a DD later on, which helps me out a lot too. Illusion runes are great. You can use them to basically just have 60% more damage in the laning stage. And you're going to notice I'm sticking to a very basic formula here. Shove the wave, walk to the nearby camp, clear it out, right? Soul Ring, W Spear. And I'm never going to have mana problems because of this Basti in the Soul Ring. You see that, guys? It's so powerful for that reason. But yeah, you're going to notice, even though I was close to top there, instead of ever trying to make a play on top, I just call my Spirit Breaker mid. This is one of the best things you can do as well, where it's like, if you think that you're having a good game and you want to apply pressure, bring people to the mid lane. Bring your teammates to the mid lane. Because then, instead of you having to go run around, and waste your time, you can have the supports turn around. Why wouldn't you do that? Think about it. If the supports can come to you and spend their time while they, of course, are not farming, right? Why not? Just bring them mid. And it might be like, well, speed, because then I can't get the safe laner that's top. Well, odds are you might even be able to get the safe laner to TP mid, funny enough. Or on top of that, you're going to get multiple supports to TP mid. And that's what we see in this game. I'm able to get the Rubik to show mid after the Spirit Breaker secured the kill, because that's how Dota works. It's how people react. And I never really ever leave my lane. And now if we look at the net worth, 2k advantage almost on the Wind Ranger. Obviously it's more like 1.5k. But that's the concepts you need to build the net worth advantage. Obviously superior last hitting. I have 70 CS in 9 minutes and 40 seconds, which is, you know, a good balance between great mana regen, great HP regen, being able to bounce from the camp to the wave and securing all the last hits, right? I also don't over focus on pressuring the Wind Ranger. The only time I really pressured her primarily was if she walked into God's Rebuke range and I want to secure creeps, that's fine. I would then hit her with it. And now this is one of my favorite examples of the game because as you're going to see, there's a very clear TP, right? Why don't I TP here? I have a DD, phase boots, and my spirit breakers in. Why not TP? Because first off, I don't have arena for a couple seconds. Not the best reason, but most importantly, 
I feel like they might back. I didn't feel like we could chase anymore. My Spirit Breaker's not six. He just used Charge. And my Lycan is not too farmed right now, right? He's, he's doing okay. He's doing fine. But he's not in the position where he's going to run over the game. And as a result, I decide to just continue to pressure mid. On top of that, this is one of the best plays to make in Dota. Taking the mid-tier 1 tower is unbelievably underrated in low MMR games as an impact play in the early game for mid laners. I remember when I was low MMR, for whatever reason, I gave myself the challenge when I was playing Sniper, and I remember this specifically, so this is not me just making up a story. When I played Sniper, I would try to take the mid tower as fast as possible. So what I would do is I'd shrapnel out the wave. I think that was like 6.83 when Sniper was fairly broken. I would shrapnel out the wave, and then I would just hit the mid tower whenever I could. Even if it was one, two auto attacks, every single wave. And it added up, and I'd take the mid tower by 7, 8, 9, 10, 11 minutes every single game. I got really good at it, and I forced a lot of rotations, and I also got really good at reacting to rotations. Think about it. I got really good at reacting to supports ganking me, because I was so used to it at that point. I'm like, oh yeah, every time I push a mid tower, the supports just run it at me. <laughs> And it was a really good lesson for me, and it, it also helped me learn how to increase my efficiency by not ganking. Now, moving on from there, after I take the mid-tier 1 tower, this is where I'm going to start to look to rotate. I do hit the mid-tier 2 just to bait some heroes to come mid, but then instantly I pop a smoke, right? I'm like, okay, yeah, I'm just going to make some gank play. Now, I, it, unfortunately, you're going to have to see speed be a, a noob. You know, I really tried my best with this one, guys, but... That guy's that guy's immortal. What am I supposed to do? All right, the, the Rubik's immortal. How am I supposed to how am I supposed to hit him? I even get flamed in all chat. Like, what? come on, bro. So we hit him with the toxic. Also, the return toxic in all chat because we don't we don't put up with that, guys. All right, we're strong. We're strong. And then yeah, I found him in the jungle. So like, yeet. <laughs> That's what I'm talking about. Free little kill. We spear him into the Mars ulti and he goes down. Obviously, you're going to hit him with the tip as well. Guys, if you don't know how to do this by this point where someone trash talks you and then you immediately gank them to just tilt the heck out of them, you're not playing Dota right. Even if this didn't tilt the Rubik, I, I have no clue. I'm sure it didn't because I'm seemingly friendly. <laughs> It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. But conceptually, I would also like to say that that gank was very effective because I brought the enemy team to me, right? The Rubik, the Venno, and the Bristleback were all there. They're not farming, and my team is AFK farming. Drow gets to take whatever she wants in the jungle. Lich gets to farm bottom. Lycan gets to farm top. I mean, look at my team comp. Look at my team comp. Do you think they want to fight that much? I mean, maybe the Lich and the Spirit Breaker do. But the other two heroes, eh, you know, maybe a little bit. But it's a bit difficult considering that the enemy team also has heroes that are very good at defending towers and preventing us from running at certain objectives. Now, before I get into the mid and slash late game, I want to give one more concept here for all of you mid lane players. Or actually, I'm sorry. This applies to basically everyone who has a hero that they feel like can fight, but they also want to farm. Let's say it's a Juggernaut with Omni Slash, a Faceless Phobic Chrono, and they're like, yeah, I got my spell, I want to do something. This is what you need to do. This is how you need to think of Dota. Exactly this. Hear me out. So, what you do is, if you have that spell, go fight. If you don't, you farm. Period. Period. Don't do anything else. Listen to me. Don't do anything else. Right? So I have my ultimate here. It's on cooldown. Do I fight? Do I look to gang? No. So what do I do? I get my wave glyphed on me. But in all seriousness, I shove a wave. Done shoving the wave, ultimate comes up. What do I do? I'm gonna go gank, right? Right? And then of course, what do you do? Right, after I get this kill, what do I do next? If you thought I was gonna say that I go back to farming, well, you were slightly correct, but on, on the back end, I'm like, I got a DD, I'm going in. This is a little bit too far though, so. I felt like I was Topson, you know? I was trying to do a little bit of Topson cosplay here. Unfortunately, he's actually good at the game and I'm working on it, <clears throat> but you know, I'll get there guys, look, look I almost turned it. Oh, oh, the raindrop saved that guy. <laughs> and then I get tipped. <laughs> and then the age old question comes up. It's 20 minutes into the game, I'm ahead, how do I end? Do you just run it down mid? No, you call Roshan. Guys, I'm gonna keep saying this in every single YouTube video for the next month. I'm actually not gonna do that, but uh, please, if you're ahead, the objective to take is Roshan in 99.9% .9 of games. I don't even care if your team comp can't take it. Go Rosh. At least try and force the enemy team to come to you. Do not just run it down high ground. But then, when you get the Aegis, you look to catch people outside of their base. Not necessarily go high ground, by the way, right? But this is how I continue to push my network lead without overextending onto the high ground. I find them outside of the base, right? They made a misplay, they should have waited on their high ground, but they didn't because that's how these pubs work in this bracket, which is around the 2-3k to 3K MMR bracket, with the mix of a few Immortal players here and there on both teams because it's unranked matchmaking, that's how it works. 
But yeah, we're able to pick up two kills and now we can go high ground because my Lycan's a good player. He shoved the mid wave for us and we can immediately transition it into a tower. So that's what you're trying to look to do. That is the best play you can possibly get. Roshan into pick off, into wave shove, into towers. And then when they're respawning, we keep on going because we're way too far ahead. But realistically, when the enemy team is respawning, that's when you back off. Do not overcommit to high ground fights, right? Do not, do not, do not, do not, do not. Obviously, this game is over. 15k net worth at 22 minutes. I mean, there's basically no way you can lose the fight. But your average game, when you're ahead and you think you can go high ground, you're probably only 3 to 4 to 5k net worth up, and that is not good enough to do this. It is not. But yeah, thank you guys for watching. I hope you learned a lot about sort of snowballing a lead because that was my goal with this game. Just kind of giving you the core concepts you need to actually look at a match and tell yourself, hey, why did I not really build a lead in a match where I felt like I could have? In a match where I'm like, I I'm pretty convinced I'm better than the enemy mid laner, but I didn't end up beating them. Hopefully this gives you some insight. Thank you guys for watching. If you enjoyed, please like and subscribe to help our channel grow. As always, we're putting out daily content here on this channel. <laughs> I've uh, been appreciating all the support lately. It's been, it's been chilling. We've been doing great. And um, yeah, I even played a lot of in-house matches with you guys lately. So yeah, if you want to play with me on the Game Leap Discord, there's a lot of great people there that are running matches over and over again, almost every single day, as far as I'm concerned. But yeah, check that out. And hopefully I'll see you there. Are you tired of being hard stuck at your rank? Over at GameLeap.com, we have a library of hundreds of guides authored by pro players and coaches covering literally every aspect of dota whether you're looking to master a new hero or role or just polish up your existing skills game leap is the proven place for competitive gamers to hone their craft and unlock their secret potential hit the link on screen right now right now to take advantage of our special offer for a 25 percent discount guys 25 percent, and start your journey today